She was born into polygamy. Her family followed the teachings of Joseph Smith, including plural marriage. Like many young girls, she had been promised to a man who was her father's age. But she ran away. She chose hell over a life of polygamy. That girl was me. I was lost, alone, desolate. Then Jesus Christ found me and rescued me. In his love, I found real freedom. He is a shield to all who will take refuge in him. This is why I can look back and ask, polygamy, what love is this? Welcome to Polygamy, What Love Is This? I'm your host, Doris Hansen, and we are glad that you're joining us for our show this week. Now, if you believe in Joseph Smith's religion of polygamy for salvation, this show is for you. We compare biblical doctrine with Joseph Smith's teachings because God told us to test everything and not to blindly accept just anything. If you're in Mormonism, especially Mormon polygamy, we dare you or challenge you to dare to doubt and then take your doubts and check them out. And if you or anyone that you know is interested uh, in getting out of a polygamous situation, if you know anybody that has questions about it, give us a call because we can help and we do help people escape polygamous situations. We provide a safe place for you and offer resources to help you. And if you have any questions about this or if you want to leave, uh, you can give us a call on our toll-free number. The number is 877-425-9993, and we keep everything in strict confidentiality. Now, if you want to make any comments or ask any questions about any of our shows, you can email us at email whatloveisthis.tv, or you can call us uh, for any questions or comments regarding the show on at 385-240-2888. The 877 number is for those who want to get out of polygamy or have questions about it, and the 385 number is for those who want to talk about the shows. So, right now, I think that we should introduce our co-host, Earl Erskine. Nice to be here again. Nice to have <laughs> you. Nice to share our conversation and what we're going to be talking this about. This is a good one tonight. <laughs> today. And this, this is something that both polygamists and fundamentalists share, because we're yes. talking about Joseph Smith again. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, talking about him just seems to never end, does it? Right. <laughs> well, on this show, we're going to focus on some of Joseph Smith's prophetic declarations, where he predicted future events that did not happen. We produce this show because if a man tells you that you must live polygamy if you want to go to heaven, you need to find out what kind of a man he is before you do what he says. Find out if he's reliable. So we decided that we would choose some of his prophecies to find out how reliable he really is. God requires us to be diligent and to make sure that we do not listen to or tolerate false prophets. And he has given us guidelines. Anyone who prophesies in the name of the Lord, if what he said doesn't take place, he is a false prophet, period. No degree, no questions asked, no error is tolerated, no error is accepted. And this is God's protection of us. We've talked about this before on past shows when we were doing TV 20, but it's time to revisit the topic and talk yeah. about some, some new things because it's important. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of Joseph Smith's prophecies where he stated the Lord said. The first prophecy we're going to talk about is Finding Treasure in Salem, Massachusetts. Now, this one is recorded in Doctrine and Covenants, section 111. And we note that in verse 1, Joseph Smith is declaring the Lord is speaking. We'll read the introduction, then part of verse 1, and then verses 2 and 4. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the prophet at Salem, Massachusetts, August 6, 1836. Uh, taken also from the, from the History of the Church, Volume 2. At this time, the leaders of the LDS Church were heavily in debt due to their labors in the ministry. And the very first verse says, I, the Lord your God. Verse 2, I have much treasure in this city for you for the benefit of Zion and many people in this city whom I will gather out in due time for the benefit of Zion 
And in verse 4, And it shall come to pass in due time that I will give this city into your hands, that you shall have power over it, insomuch that they shall not discover your secret parts, and its wealth pertaining to gold and silver shall be yours. So this is a revelation, <laughs> he called it, or a prophecy. And verse 1 says, I, the Lord your God, saying right. he's speaking the, for God. God's, he's saying what God's, God's doing. Spoke. God's giving him the revelation, yes. Right, that's exactly. So treasure was not discovered there in Salem, Massachusetts, nor was it given into any of the hands of the Mormons by God or by anyone else. So it's a false promise. It's a false prophecy. So let's go to Deuteronomy and read what God uh, says about a chap false prophecy. Chapter 18, verse 22 says, If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. So this is a false prophecy because they didn't find treasure yeah. and it wasn't given into the hands of the Mormons. And so there's, I, there's and no it, question. And I don't think they got a hold of the city either. <laughs> Salem, <laughs> they didn't, Massachusetts. They, it, they went the other way. Yeah, yeah, it didn't fall in their hands. That's no, true. So no. it's a false prophecy. And then the second one is the Civil War. We have talked about this several times, but we need to visit it again because new for the sake of new viewers and sure. also because it's a very important prophecy that we do need to pay attention to. It's not a fulfilled prophecy. Actually, Joseph Smith merely was reporting current events, but where he did predict the future in this prophecy, he got it all wrong. It was on December 25th of 1832 that Joseph Smith recorded this prophecy concerning the Civil War, Doctrine and Covenants 87. Yeah, and again, this is in the Doctrine and Covenants as the first one was. Verily, thus saith the Lord concerning the wars that will shortly come to pass, beginning at the rebellion of South Carolina, which will eventually terminate in the death and misery of many souls. And the time will come that that war will be poured out upon all nations, beginning at this place. For behold, the southern states shall be divided against the northern states, and the southern states will call on other nations, even the nation of Great Britain, as it is called, and they shall also call upon other nations in order to defend themselves against other nations, and then war shall be poured out upon all nations. And it shall come to pass after many days, slaves shall rise up against their masters, who shall be marshaled and disciplined for war. So I, I hear a lot of, uh, of uh, people in Mormonism say, well, this, he got this one right. Yeah. But actually, he was reporting contemporary news sources, things that they already knew. Six months before Joseph Smith recorded this prophecy, Congress had passed the Tariff Act, and South Carolina had rebelled. Yeah. And Smith was well aware of these current events. The North and the South was already rumbling. <laughs> so it wasn't news. It, wasn't, it, was, uh, it was news, but something that Joseph Smith Smith um, was pulled aware into of. a, a yeah. yeah, very, very well aware Everyone of. Everyone was. Now, the, remem the remainder of this prophecy is a miserable failure because, and it can be established simply by reading it, where he said the southern states are going to call on other nations, even the nation of Great Britain, as it's called, and they shall call upon other nations in order to defend themselves against other nations, and then war shall be poured out upon all nations. War was not poured out on all no, nations. No. Nobody called upon the other nations. Great Britain wasn't called upon. Nobody called upon anybody else to ask other nations to come and defend themselves, nor was it poured out on everybody. It's a failed prophecy. I know that Great, Great Britain and Fan France had to be concerned and con concerned about the war, but they were as equally for the North as they were for the South, and certainly not... Uh, and they n never did get involved and never officially were involved. So. And they don't, it says that they will call upon the other nations yeah. to come and help. Yeah. And then other nations will call on other nations and then war will be poured out upon all the nations. Didn't happen. <laughs> now God said it has to, the prophecies have to be fulfilled precisely as the prophet yeah. says. So this is a false prophecy. The next one we want to talk about is pestilence, hail, famine, and earthquake in the United States. Yeah, this is from the History of the Church, Volume 1. And now I am prepared to say by the authority of Jesus Christ that not many years shall pass away before the United States shall present such a scene of bloodshed as has not a parallel in the history of our nation. Pestilence, hail, famine, and earthquake will sweep the wicked of, the, of this generation from off the face of the land to open and prepare the way for the return of the lost tribes of Israel from the north country. The people of the Lord, those who have complied with the requirements of the new covenant, have already commenced gathering together to Zion, which is in the state of Missouri. 
Therefore I declare unto you the warning which the Lord has commanded to declare unto this generation, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. Repent ye, repent ye, and flee to Zion before the overflowing scourge overtake you, for there are those now living upon the earth whose eyes shall not be closed in death until they see all these things which I have spoken fulfilled. Okay, now this is quite a prophecy, again, Very that Joseph bold. Smith has given. <laughs> and he said that, that Zion was in Missouri. You go into the Bible, all through the Bible, you read, especially the Old Testament, that Zion is in Jerusalem, okay? It's not in Missouri. Now, there was such a widespread destruction of the wicked of this generation, it never happened. No. And he no. said that's what would happen. Uh, Joseph Smith wrote uh, at the very beginning, by the authority of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last sentence says, for those who are now living upon the earth, whose eyes shall not be closed in death until they see all these things fulfilled. Well, how many years ago was this? Are, they st are those people still alive? No. He says it's going to happen before they die, and it hasn't happened. Everyone who was alive then are not alive today. Their eyes have closed in death. This prophecy was not and has not been fulfilled. And you know what? Time is the enemy of all false prophets. You know, I was going to ask, as we've kind of considered these topics uh, today, in the polygamy groups, are there prophets as bold as Joseph Smith oh, was yeah. in oh, proclaiming yes. these kinds of broad, thus saith God mm -hmm. kind of things? None of them are as been as bold as, as uh, Warren Jeffs has been, but he wrote that big volume. Yeah, in fact, we did a couple of shows on it uh, yeah. a couple of years ago uh, where he prophesied and sent these volumes all over the world to leaders all over the world. Yes, but they're not as bold as, as yeah. uh, Joseph Smith has been. But you're right. Time is the enemy of every false right. prophet. It's yeah. the enemy. Me. And, and yeah. we have proved through time that Joseph Smith was a false prophet. The next one is a temple that was supposed to be built in Zion, Missouri. We read the introduction, section 84 of Doctrine and Covenants, verses 1 through 5. And then another section from the Doctrine and Covenants, revelation given through Joseph Smith the prophet at Kirtland, Ohio, September 22nd and 23rd of 1832, History of the Church. A revelation of Jesus Christ unto his servant, Joseph Smith, Jr., and six elders. Yea, the word of the Lord concerning his church established in the last days for the gathering of his saints to stand upon Mount Zion, which shall be the city of New Jerusalem, which city shall be built beginning at the temple lot, which is appointed by the finger of the Lord in the western boundaries of the state of Missouri and dedicated by the hand of Joseph Smith, Jr. and others with whom the Lord was well pleased. Verily, this is the word of the Lord, that the city New Jerusalem shall be built by the gathering of the saints beginning at this place, even the place of the temple, which temple shall be reared in this generation. For verily, this generation shall not pass away until an house shall be built unto the Lord, and a cloud shall rest upon it, which cloud shall be even the glory of the Lord, which shall fill the house." This temple wow. was never built <laughs> no. in this generation or during the lifetime of Joseph Smith. Now, because of persecution, the Mormons were forced to get out of Missouri. No temple was built within the generation that Smith wrote this. Now, God knows the future, and he was well aware what would or wouldn't happen, and God will not give false information or false uh, promises for any reason. This prophecy came from another source. It didn't come from God. You know, it's funny. I, uh, When you think about all the people that left the church at different times during the process, and I always judge those people as being so weak in their faith. But I can imagine somebody hearing all these prophecies and the failed banks and all the other things that would go on, the polygamy eventually. Mm -hmm. They just kind of throw their hands up and say, you know, there's something wrong Something's here. Something's wrong here. Something wrong that's here. That's right. And, and that's why we do this show is we want people to question. Yeah. We want you to realize there is something wrong here <laughs> yeah. and, and check it out. The next one is Joseph, one of Joseph Smith's racist prophecies. In 2 Nephi chapter 30, verse 6 of the Book of Mormon, we read a prophecy about the Lamanites. It can easily be put to the test. Yeah, I don't know if this is humorous or not. But it says in 2 Nephi chapter 30, And many generations shall not pass away among them, save thou should be, they shall be a pure 
and a delightsome people. Okay, that said pure and delightsome. Now yes. let's read from the 1830 Book of Mormon. And many generations shall not pass away among them, save thou shall be a white and delightsome people. Okay, now Joseph Smith is talking about the Native Americans who convert to Mormonism will turn white and delightsome in, in 1830, right. but in 1981 Book of Mormon, they're only gonna turn pure and <laughs> delightsome. Why did it change? 180 years have passed. Now, the 1830 Book of Mormon was supposed to be the Word of God, right? Yeah. Right? But That's they right. didn't. Uh, the generations passed. They're not even a shade whiter, and they probably don't even want to be. No. But this proves that he is a false prophet. And besides that, it's an insult to all dark-skinned people that joining the Mormon church is going to turn them white. Like, white makes one proves you're righteous or something? Yeah. That's ridiculous. This is a false prophecy, and it's a very offensive one as well. The next one is the Nauvoo House from Doctrine and Covenants 124, recorded in 1841, where Joseph Smith prophesied that the Nauvoo House in Nauvoo, Illinois, would be in his family forever. Uh, what does forever mean? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a long time. Read verse 59 and 60. <laughs> and just before I read this, if anybody really wants a strange read, just read Doctrine and Covenants section 124. If these are the words of a prophet, I, I'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. Anyway, verse 59 says, Therefore let my servant Joseph and his seed after him have place in that house from generation to generation forever and ever, saith the Lord. And let the name of that house be called Nauvoo House. So the Nauvoo house did not remain in Joseph Smith's family forever and every generation after that. It is not owned by them to this day. It's a false prophecy. Mm -hmm. Now, how many false prophecies does it take to, <laughs> to prove a false prophet? Just one, I think. <laughs> Just one. And we've done six so far. We've done yeah. six. The next one is that Joseph is supposed to triumph over his foes. And this section is from 121 of the Doctrine and Covenants. And we will, will read the preface. Um, the preface of it tells us that he's in the Liberty Jail in Missouri, dated 1839. Let's read part of this. Yeah, starting in verse 7. My son, peace be unto thy soul. Thine adversity and thine affliction shall be but a small moment. And then if thou endure it well, God shall exalt thee on high. Thou shalt triumph over all thy foes. And also that God hath set his hand and seal to change the times and seasons and to blind their minds that they may not understand his marvelous workings and take them in their own craftiness. And not many years hence that they and their posterity shall be swept from under heaven, saith God, that not one of them is left to stand by the wall. Now this prophecy foretells that Joseph Smith would triumph over all his enemies. Yeah. But within five years he was arrested, thrown into prison, and his enemies mobbed and killed him and his brother. Now God would have known that was going to happen, and he wouldn't have given a prophecy and then allow the opposite to happen. God doesn't lie. He doesn't give false promises. But a man who is speaking without God will give false promises, and Joseph Smith did. After his death, the entire church fled to Utah. This isn't triumphing over their enemies. And then after they got to Utah, they refused to obey the laws of the land. The government triumphed over them again by threatening to break their economic power if they didn't obey their laws against polygamy. And decades later, they were again forced to change their racist position on the blacks or lose tax-exempt status. This isn't triumphing no. in any sense of no. the word. Other false statements in this prophetic message, verse 12, God never changed the times and the seasons. Joseph Smith's enemies were not blinded. The posterity of Smith's enemies were not swept away from <laughs> under heaven. He was, but they weren't. This is a failed prophecy. Number eight, the Potsherd prophecy. The early Mormons were not fond of the United States government. We read the next one. Another bold statement. I prophesy in the name of the Lord God of Israel, unless the United States redress the wrongs committed upon the saints in the state of Missouri and punish the crimes committed by her officers, that in a few years the government will be utterly overthrown and wasted and there will not be so much as a potsherd left. Well, Congress never paid any attention to Joseph Smith's demands. It did not redress any perceived wrongs. Despite Joseph Smith's dire threat, which he said was from the Lord God of Israel, at least three more things did not come to pass. 
Congress was never overthrown. The United States <laughs> government was not destroyed. It was not overthrown or wasted. In fact, the opposite took place. The United States government grew stronger and more powerful until it became the most powerful country in all the world. So much for Joseph Smith's threats and fear-mongering against the United States of America. Yeah. The next one is the destruction of Emma Smith for rejecting polygamy. Doctrine and Covenants again, section 132, verse 54. But if she will not abide this commandment, she shall be destroyed, saith the Lord. For I am the Lord thy God and will destroy her if she abide not in my law. Oh, my goodness. Awful, huh? <laughs> We've talked about this many times on this show. It's a good uh, one. But it fits in with so much of our discussions. The lack of fulfillment is, of this prophecy is perhaps poetic justice on God's part because it was Emma who lived a long life, and it was Joseph Smith who was uh, taken away at a young age. He was destroyed, yes, less than a year after he recorded the polygamy revelation. Notice that polygamy is no longer practiced by the LDS, even though Joseph Smith called it an everlasting covenant, they gave it up, and it was the Mormon fundamentalists who picked up the polygamy mantle. This is another false prophecy of Joseph Smith. Now, at the beginning of the show, we read what God said about false prophets in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 22. You can pick up your own Bible, dust, this, dust it off, <laughs> and read those verses. They're very important. God doesn't want us to be deceived. He, if even one prophecy fails to come through, precisely as the prophet gave it, he's a false prophet. And what's interesting is that the punishment for a false prophet in those times was death, yeah. capital punishment. And to do justice to Joseph Smith's prophecies, we thought we would share what someone else has already prepared or had said regarding the failures of Joseph Smith's prophetic efforts, that Smith did get one right. And it's a fulfilled prophecy um, of uh, recorded in 1828, Doctrine and Covenants 3, verse 4. Yeah. For although a man may have many revelations and have power to do many mighty works, yet if he boasts in his own strength, sets it not the counsels of God, and follows after the dictates of his own will and carnal desires, he must fall and incur the vengeance of a just God upon him. Well, on June 27th of 1844, this prophetic word was fulfilled upon Joseph Smith himself. It happened about a month after he publicly boasted about himself, and this is how it went. History of the Church, Volume 6, page 408. I have more to boast of than, if, than any man ever had. I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a church together since the days of Adam. Neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. I boast that no man ever did such a work as I. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the Latter-day Saints never ran away from me yet. It seems that God <laughs> had had enough of Joseph Smith's arrogant attitude and false prophecies which were leading people astray. Now, the prophets aren't supposed to lead no, people astray. No. He was murdered by a mob who stormed the jail and shot him and his brother dead. Of course, that's not how the Mormons teach it, but at least this time, Joseph Smith did get one prophecy right. <laughs> He's the one who wrote the boastful prophet oh, prophecy, yes. yeah. and then he turned around and said he had more to boast of, more than even Jesus Christ. I, know. I wonder if, if God in heaven is watching this and he says, okay, that's far enough. You've gone too far this time. <laughs> You know, making wonder, himself higher than Jesus. I, I know this particular boasting, a lot of Mormons don't know that it exists, and the few that do, uh, it's, it's impacted them. It's, it's actually brought a few people out of the church, mm -hmm. I think, because mm -hmm. they realize how boastful and, and no fear of God right. at all. Right, no fear of God at all. Yeah. He, he couldn't have done that if he had any fear of God. No. And, and he's not this humble young man, that, uh, you know, this holier than thou religious man that they portray him to be at no. all. Not no, when you not. read the history, you find no. it's not. There's, there's often an argument, often repeated, that the, the, the leaders aren't perfect. You know, you hear this all the time. They're not perfect. They made mistake. That Jesus alone was perfect. And, and with that justification, they just seem to dismiss all the deceit and the cover-ups and the misinformation of all of their history going clear back to the beginning. But is it too much to expect honesty from those who claim to speak for God? 
this isn't a one-time event or a single man who failed although this single man failed many times. But we're talking about over 175 years of individuals and groups of men who have created lies and cover-ups and who have systematically passed these cover-ups on to others who pass them on to the next generation and so on for over 175 years. Yeah. We're talking about lies and deception from people who knew what they were doing. Now, we cannot just label that as being imperfect. This has been a plan in action. It's been an agenda. It is base dishonesty. It's bearing false witness. And it's condemned by the very religion they're trying to protect. Whether it's the fundamentalists or the LDS, they've all been involved in this deception. They cover it up and cover it up and cover it up. Yeah, and, and then make excuses. And we've pointed out other prophecies of Brigham Young and other deceptions about polygamy and other things that they, they used to have Section 101 in the Doctrine mm -hmm. and Covenants for up until 1876 right. that said we only, we only believe in one man one and one wife. woman, and yet they were practicing polygamy at the same time. Right. And, and we have, um, and that's a very good point, too, yeah. because they made that change way after polygamy was right. declared yeah. uh, as, as a, a general um, practice. But we have a list of over 50 false prophecies of Joseph Smith. We've offered this before. We'll offer it to any of our viewers again. If you want to email us, email at whatloveisthis.tv, and we will send you by PDF file. You have to email us in order to get it. We will send you a list of his 55 false prophecies prophecies. That's a heavy duty amount of yeah. false prophecies for any man to give and for any church to follow yeah. a man who gave that many, that who led that much. And how many millions of people have been led astray by this? They say they won't lead anyone astray yet. Yeah. Blind as you can, we can be. <laughs> through the yeah, well, right now they say there's how many million? Fifteen. Fifteen. And million. how many through the ages have there been? Yeah. yeah. How many, many. Through, through all these? Decades have there been. How many polygamists are led astray? This man with all these false prophecies, don't live polygamy because he told you to, because he got it wrong. Thank you. Thank you again. My pleasure. Pearl. is very interesting. You know, eternity is a long, long time to regret being wrong, to regret the pride, the fear, or the stubbornness that keeps anyone from checking out the truth. Trusting a false prophet's teachings for eternal life is an irreversible mistake. Why trust a man? Why not just trust Jesus alone? Can your prophet really do better than Jesus did? Can he keep promises better? We should fear not investigating rather than being afraid to investigate. We should fear believing a man instead of believing God's word, especially a man who said he spoke for God but got it wrong so many times, especially a man who taught that polygamy is required for eternal life. Jesus never got anything wrong and neither has the Bible, so they have earned our trust. See you next time on Polygamy, What Love Is This?